how does knowledge of physics affect my day-to-day -day practice of cardiology? And this is independent of research. You know, the, if you think about it, the heart is a brilliantly engineered uh, uh, piece of machinery. So everything starts with an electrical impulse. So in order to understand cardiology, you have to understand something about electrical conduction and how it occurs. Uh, that electrical conduction has to translate into a pump function. So with the electricity that we typical think, typically think about on an EKG, it triggers the heart to start squeezing or relaxing according to the electrical signals. And that was what we call electromechanical uh, association. Now the heart as a pump is a cyclical pump. And so it is something that has to essentially eject out and push blood into a system and then refill each time. So there's a lot of mechanical properties and uh, engineering concepts in terms of flow, um, uh, pressures, and, uh, and geometry that you have to take into account. And then finally, the whole purpose of the heart pumping is to deliver blood to different organs uh, of the body. So we have to think about you know, the same engineering concepts, uh, hydrodynamics, uh, pressures, resistances, that people think about when they, when they organize the, the sewer system or water supply of a city or uh, pipelines for, for oil delivery. How do we actually make hydrodynamic measurements when assessing the heart function? So there's a lot of different ways of doing it. The, the bottom line is it, it really depends on uh, what you're trying to measure and how critical it is to have uh, accurate information. So we measure pressures in blood vessels or in the heart by directly measuring the pressure with fluid-filled catheters or other types of uh, solid-state catheters which can uh, measure pressures in different uh, chambers of the heart or different parts of a blood vessel. Uh, and we do that usually invasively with catheters that are placed uh, within the, the veins or the arteries in a leg or an arm and are fed up to the heart or into a, a blood vessel. Uh, we will sometimes use those same catheters to not just measure pressures but also to measure velocity. So for example, sometimes we're very interested in the blood flow in a blood vessel of the heart. And so we can have a tiny little catheter uh, that we could feed into the uh, arteries of the heart to measure the velocity going through there. A lot of what we do nowadays, though, is not invasive. It doesn't involve catheters, but it actually involves non-invasive assessment of flows and velocities and pressure gradients. And for that, in, in ultrasound, we generally use uh, Doppler principles. So we'll actually send out ultrasound at a certain frequency and then receive back uh, the frequency shift to be able to tell the velocity of moving blood uh, from one direction to another. And from that we can actually apply classic hydrodynamic principles to figure out velocities and calculate pressure gradients. You can also do similar things with MRI, for example, and use different uh, what they call phase encoding of the MRI signals to measure regional velocities within the heart or within a blood vessel. And then finally, we're, we're really getting kind of more detailed about how we, we assess uh, mechanics of the heart itself by applying some of the same Doppler principles, not for looking at flowing blood, but for moving tissue as well. So these are all principles where we've taken essentially mechanical engineering and applied it to better understand uh, fluid dynamics uh, of the heart and, and the vasculature.